Hello, my name is Kelsey. Um, I'm an interactive landscape architect I'm from Alaska. I just finished my master's degree at Rhode Island School of Design. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about a new friend that I met this last year called the North American Grid and how exciting and amazing it is. <laughs> um, my uh, thesis project was called Grid Talk, Giving a Voice to Energy Infrastructures. So you may be wondering why I sat outside and looked at manhole covers for many, many days, being very intrigued by them. Um, and this is just one of them, and I will get to this later, um, and why you should pay attention to all of your manhole covers. It all started uh, a year and a half ago, whenever I was visiting this small town um, in Rhode Island, and I found this building to be mighty peculiar. And I went to the side of it, and I found two men fishing off the side of it, and I said, hey, guys, what is this building? And they said, I don't know. It just has warm water that comes out of it. And so it's good for fishing, because the fish like to stay here all year round. And I was like, that's interesting, but I want to know what's inside. You know, what's inside of it? Um, so it turns out this building had a job, and the reason why the water was warm was because it was a power plant. And it wasn't just any power plant. It was one of the first power plants ever built in the United States. Um, it had huge inside with beautiful museum inside um, that wasn't open to the public. Uh, confusing. And um, no one seemed to really care about this building in the community, and I thought, wow, this is almost religious. This structure was so powerful, it was so amazing, and I, the, the only thing I could think about was, everyone needs to see this, everyone needs to see where their energy comes from, because maybe they would care about it more, you know? Um, so then I asked the guy who was showing me around, so where does all of this go? Do all the people who use this energy know that it's coming from a historic building? Because that would be cool, right? No. Um, he said, the grid is a weird thing, and it's very complicated, and we don't know where the energy goes. Plus, National Grid is the servicer, and they won't tell us that information. We just operate this facility. And I said, well, that's an unacceptable answer. And thus began this project. Um, so, question. Do you, any of you know where this comes from? Where all of this energy comes from here? Uh, is it, you know, like what? What process is it? What fuels it? How far does it go? Is it made here? Is it made somewhere else? And what happens whenever it goes away? It seems like we only really pay attention to energy when either climate change is happening and we have to change it because of necessity, or whenever it turns off. The later is most likely. Um, so I decided I was going to inform myself about this. That was a very hard thing to do because it turns out I was not an electrical engineer, and this is all very complicated. Um, the units, the terms, it was just all so much for me. So I started thinking about it in a different way, a way that I am very familiar with, food. Um, and it turns out that calories and kilowatt hours are interchangeable. So I kind of held a uh, little public forum and asked people if they would Think about their energy differently if, it was, if their bill was not measured in kilowatt hours, but in calories. Turns out an average New England home uh, uses about 300 and, what, 60? Yeah, 360 donuts a day. And I thought, oh, my house needs to go on a diet, and I didn't feel so bad about my meals that day. Um, so I was interested in um, what our country eats, and it turns out that there's all sorts of different um, regional affiliations with what types of fuel they use for um, powering power plants. Um, so like in the South, you eat barbecue, and the Pacific Northwest, your city eats hydropower. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so how does this thing work? Uh, the, the North American grid is actually the largest machine ever built, but it's completely human run. And it's precariously human in the fact that all of the calculations done for each next day's worth of energy are done by a group of people who are calculating meteorological patterns, uh, what holidays are happening, how much happened last year. And then they all get together, and then they make these decisions and say, you power plant, you power plant, you power plant. Make all of this energy, we need exactly this much. And what happens if all of a sudden a storm hits, and then like, they don't run out, you know, they run out of energy? Well, so they either get taxed for that, fined, or they have to import energy. This is a map of New England's energy system. The white dots you would probably think are cities, but they're not. They're power plants, and the yellow lines are natural gas pipelines, and the pink are oil pipelines. This is effectively a map of all the things energy-related in this giant region. 
So I started looking at all the data, and it turns out that certain energy plants have pads and energy flows. Um, and if you kind of look at this, you see that everything starts trickling down to New York City. Well, I was curious about that, and I said, well, it, how, how much energy does New York City make and how much do they import? And do those people in New York City know where their energy comes from? They probably don't. Um, so I started looking at even heavier data and found out that this was indeed true. New York's metabolic processes, how much energy exchanges as a state is actually very crazy. We, they import so much Canadian energy. And this idea of energy as being apolitical in a certain way, it doesn't have boundaries. It's, we all need it and we all trade it with each other, but it's kind of done in silence, really. Um, and so there is no real endemic way to trace energy. Um, so I zoomed into New York City, which uses about 60% of all of the energy produced in New York State, um, but only produces 40% itself, so it imports the extra 20%. These um, dots up here, <laughs> these boxes, are all the power plants that exist in New York City, and I was particularly interested in the orange one in the center, which is called Ravenswood. It's a typical power plant. Um, it takes natural gas, burns it, creates steam from water, and then uses that steam to turn turbines, which then go around a coil, coil produces electricity, ta-da. Um, but the weird thing about this plant is that it reuses its steam in this kind of weird-looking blue thing in the middle of here, and what that is is the New York steam system, which is a system of over 170 kilometers worth of pipe that run underneath Manhattan, and they actually run basically every skyscraper that you see in there. Not many people know about this system. Um, and when I found it, I fell in love with it, and I became strangely obsessed with it, and that's why I spent so many days looking at those manhole covers. Um, but I wanted to show this to the public kind of like I wanted to show that power plant to the public, and I thought, how can I convey this information to people? So I started mapping out routes between all of the public buildings around Manhattan that use this energy system and all of the parks and how it intersects with our lives. And maybe there was a way I could get it to come up and like say something to, it, to us. You know, how could we talk to it? Um, so this is um, the steam system. This is steam coming out of a vent. Um, but underneath the steam vent, there is a whole labyrinth but every single one of these steam vents ha comes with a pressure release system. And normally they do it um, in a central location, but I propose that by releasing the pressure system, by releasing the steam through smaller um, decentralized things, that each of these new manhole covers that I would design for the steam system would become musical instruments and let the steam come out of them. Um, and by doing this, um, New York City effectively becomes a giant musical instrument, and uh, so I started focusing on the East River power plant, which provides most of the steam to the system. These are all of the different power plants, and it would vary the, so this is the components of it, and there's 3,000 of these manhole covers, right? So basically I had to come up with a way that all of them couldn't be retrofitted at once, and they all had certain different tones based on thresholds, so if you were certain, if you were a close to the, um, power plant, it would be louder, and if you were farther away, it would be less. Um, so by going above ground, you could hear what was happening underneath of you and how much pressure was changing. Um, so this was the path that I chose that had the most, <laughs> I mapped it out, had the most uh, manhole covers and steam density um, and put it through as many public parks as I could and created a public system called the steam circuit. Um, and the steam circuit, is completely hypothetical, but if any engineers want to help me with this, I would love you forever. Um, but this thing is, uh, so what I consider this project to be is a very reactive project. It's built and it's adapting to an old system that has been there for since 1882. It's pre-electrical age, right? Um, but I really think that in the future, designers have such a huge say in how to humanize these systems, how to make people aware of where their energy comes from. So I would like to get on board with new planned systems. And I have two programs that are public programs in the United States. One is 1% for art, which gives 1% of a commission, 1% um, of any project budget to an artist for commission. And then um, AmeriCorps, which I am a personal alumnus of, and it's a program which has volunteers come and go for nonprofits, 
civic work, um, anything that needs help, domestic help, um, and new minds to approach things differently. And I think by combining these types of things, some design and art with public service, there is a new program that could be made um, that would be called Design Corps, where people could go in after design school if they decide they don't know what they want to do, but they're interested in the public realm and infrastructure, that they could assist engineers with coming up with better ideas to make these things less ugly, for one, and two, to make them talk to us, make them more interactive with how we want to understand energy. So a design core example. Inside of your bags, um, there is a pamphlet that I made for you. In, an, in preparation for Dutch Design Week, I put together this study. So I just studied um, the Netherlands grid. Um, and you know how I asked you where your food came from? Well, this is Eindhoven's food. There's actually about four power plants. They're all natural gas-based that are just east of Eindhoven that probably are providing this right now. Um, but the Netherlands currently today only have 6% of their um, energy coming from renewable sources. But by 2023, in just a couple of years, they're slated to put out all of these offshore wind farms and increase that by more than half, or more doubling the, that amount of energy. And one of these wind farms can power the whole Amsterdam metro region <laughs> worth of houses for people. Um, so my question really is, this is so far away from people's eyes. How do you get them to recognize what a wind farm is? Like, how, how can you make that a public realm process if it's, so, if it's 50 kilometers off a shore, you know? Um, and more than that, I'm interested in government issues too, and the fact that wind power is actually run by the economic affairs instead of the infrastructure and environment, which I thought that that's what it would be under. So I, I'm curious about, like government collaborations and creating these multidisciplinary jobs, kind of like Alex was saying, that allow people to go between these sorts of things and come up with better um, PR solutions, basically, for these energy systems and increasing an awareness of why we need to move towards cleaner energy. The last thing is, is that I created a website called Infrastructure, which is um, design ideas for human-centric um, infrastructures. And if you have any ideas, please contact me, and we can hopefully get this thing started. And I would love any input that any of you have for any sort of design ideas. It could be sewage plants, highways, anything. But I think that humans really should get back into the things that they build for themselves, and energy is one of the most important ones. So thank you.